That's Luke chapter 18, and we're going to read from verses 1 through to 8. If you have it, say you have it. Okay, let's go. Then he, then he, Jesus, spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not to lose heart. There was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God, nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that same city, and she came to that judge saying, Get justice for, for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterwards he said within himself, Though I do not fear God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her. Lest by her continual coming she wearies me. Then the Lord said, verse 6, Hear what this unjust judge said, and shall God not avenge his own elect? who cry out to him day and night, though he bears long with them, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Amen. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? Shall we pray? Spirit of the living God, as we are about to enter your words, we pray for your presence. We pray for your enlightenment. And as your words go forth, let it go forth with clarity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Life is full of unexpectancy. Things that comes to us that we didn't expect. Now, living in Jehe, you have to grow up fast. And I mean, in so many other parts of the world, you have to grow up fast, you know. As a child, you think that um, life is all about play. But when you become, as you grow, you know that, you know, life is more than just play. Here we have um, this widow, a mother, we suppose, who, have, who has lost her husband. She is seeking justice. But Jesus said that this judge was unjust. It's really a tough thing, a hard thing to go before a judge that is unjust. But the Bible says that she was persistent. Are you following me? Amen. She did not give up. And for a while he tried to ignore her. But then he said to himself, if I should do this, then she will weary me. Should I not avenge her? He said, yes. It's funny how God is comparing himself to an unjust judge, because God is a judge. He's comparing himself to an unjust judge. 
and somebody who wants justice from an unjust judge. More so, will not God give us justice? How many times have you cried to God for something? How many times we cry out for justice? It's happening all around. I'm sure that the family of George Floyd is crying out for justice. Huh? I'm sure that a mother who has lost her child, you know, either by junk driving or something, is crying out for justice. I mean, the cost of living, aren't you crying out for justice? Yes. It is telling me what caused this widow to be so persistent. It must have been her fate. This draws me to the conclusion that fate matters. What do you say? Fate is very important because this is what the Bible says. Jesus in particular. When the Son of Man comes, will he really find fate on the earth? It is telling me then that there is something that is going against our faith. But what really is faith? But before we go into that, let us look on the pros and the cons of faith. What are some pros and cons that we know about faith? First, faith, the Bible says, will make us whole. Faith also removes mountains, right? Some person says a mountain can be a giant or our instabilities or our insecurities. The Bible also says that faith also is like a sycamine tree. A sycamine tree. A tree has roots, doesn't it? So a sycamine tree in this sense is anything that is deep-rooted. Unforgiveness. Isn't that something that we struggle with and it goes deep? Has someone ever done you wrong? It hurts the most when it's somebody who is close to you, right? Like a family member, right? Or, or a dear friend. Unforgiveness we struggle with. Bitterness. A lot of times we get bitter against some people, right? Because they, they constantly do us wrong. And the Bible says that we should love. It's a struggle. The next thing is that the prose is that it gives us confidence in God. Right? But to everything, it seems like there is the opposite. So faith also has some cons to it. What are some cons of faith? First, we're told that without faith, it is impossible to please God. It is telling me then that faith is very important. It is vital to please in God. Also, faith brings on doubt. Faith makes us live in, or well, faithlessness makes us live in fear. Faith, the Bible says, produces dead works. Faith without works is dead. It's the foolish man that builds his house upon a sand, right? But a wise man builds his house on a rock. Faith will make us sink below the cares of life. Have, is there any burden on your heart? Have you ever done something that you are so sorry for, but you can't forget it? Guilt? Oh. The hardest thing, well, within my experience, is not necessarily to forgive somebody else. But it's to forgive yourself. Because you always remember the bad things that you do. 
fate. What is fate? The Bible says, now fate is the substance of things hoped for. What is it that you hope for? And this substance that is talking about, it's not smoking a joint. It's not alcohol or pharmaceutical drugs. It is something that is substantial. It is something that is hoped for. This is telling me that to have faith, you must hope for something. Am I correct? That's the first part. The second part of faith, it's that it's the evidence of things not seen. Seems like faith is like a witness. Huh? How can evidence be unseen? Faith must be a process then. A process, right? Huh? Must get some form of investigation must happen when it comes on to faith. All right, so let us move on. Now, if faith is the substance of things, then a substance is a particular kind of matter with uniform properties. Particular is the first word we're looking at. What, is, what does particular mean? Particular is unique, right? It's distinct. Particular. Are we a particular or the word is used peculiar people? Are we different? Ah, huh? yes. we are different. It's matter, and we can get into that. Matter can be visible or invisible. Uniform properties. Fate is not in isolation, right? It's united. So you can't, you can't um, say you have fate, but don't act on it, right? Fate doesn't act outside off. And as we get into the word, we'll understand. Because the Bible says, now fate comes by. We're going to get there. I want you to follow me now. Now, how is fate particular? The word particular is used to single out an individual or a specific group or class of people. What are we called to do? Are we called to serve? We as God's people, we represent God, right? Are we special? Yes. The Bible says that we are a chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood. Say it with me. A what? A holy nation. What else? We are a royal priesthood. And we are called to do something. What are we called to do? Pro proclaim. Proclaim who? The praises of him who has brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light. So God identifies us as priests, right? Royal. We feel good, right? So we are not beneath, but we are above. So we must act accordingly. But not only just to be, because you have some persons who, they say they're important. They say they're royalty, but they don't do anything for anybody. They're just all for themselves. Right? God is saying that we are called out of darkness into his marvelous light. And we must proclaim, talk about the praises of him. So we are always pointing people to, to him. Now, fate is like matter. And you have to um, bear with me because 
I'm a teacher by profession. So I like to get into things, you know. I like, I, I'm, I'm a thinker. I, I, I just don't hear something and not research it. Because it, it, it must make sense to me, okay? Amen. Now, matter in its physical form is distinct from the mind and the spirit. What do I mean? Matter can be, as I said, it can be visible and invisible. The air that we breathe, can you see it? No. But it's matter. Matter is something that occupies space and, and mass. Right? Or some person would say, wait. But yet it is distinct from energy. What does everything have to do with fate? What a person believes matter. And what you believe, if it matters, it means that it will affect both your mind and your spirit. Are you understand what I'm saying? What we believe will affect the way or we think or we see ourselves. Jesus said, Blessed are those who yet they do not see, but believe. Who did he say that to? Thomas. Remember Thomas? As a man think it, I'm using some scripture, so is, so is he. So our belief is very important, right, to faith. All right, let's move on. What are the uniform properties of faith? Now, since, so we touch on two, we touch on two things. We know that um, faith is like matter, right? We did say that it is different from the mind and the spirit. Because sometimes you hear a person say, I don't feel like to do this. But faith is more than just what we feel, right? You don't, you don't get up every day and feel like you want to pray or you feel like you want to talk to God or you don't feel love. No, you don't feel like to love your neighbors every day. You don't feel that way. But faith goes beyond our feelings. That's why I said it is distinct. Right? Now, what are the uniform properties? Because then things must come together. Now, since faith is that substance, right, um, with uniform properties, this means... That the fullness of faith or faithfulness is comprised or made up of specific things. Right? Things must come together like particles. Don't it? Yeah. So what are some of these things? Trust. Assurance. You can say them. Confidence. What else? Knowledge. Knowledge. And the last one is? Yeah. So we're going to explore those. Because it's important. Because... When I'm finished today, I want us to have a real knowledge of what faith is. That faith is not something we just have, or something we just do. It's embedded in us. Okay. Trust. And this is something that is not easy. The Bible says that we must trust in the Lord with some of our hearts. With what? All of our hearts. And it says we must not lean to our own understanding, but in some of our ways. In what? In all of our ways we must acknowledge Him. Now all of these, it is very important. Because sometimes we will only want to acknowledge God in some of our ways. <laughs> and He's saying it won't work. And that is why faith is uniform. It has uniform properties. So when we fall short, we normally don't blame ourselves. We normally blame who? God. We blame God. See, we, we might not say it out like, oh, I say it out, but we do. Because we ask God, hey, God, if you love me so much, why these things are happening to me, right? I am the only person that asks the question, why God? Why now? Why me? Right? Assurance. 
the Bible says that we must l draw near to God with a sincere heart, with full assurance. Why? Why should we draw near to God with full assurance? If, you, if we draw near to God, God will draw near to us. He said, Behold, I stand at the door, and if anybody hear my voice, he said, first thing, we should not what? Don't harden our heart. Amen. Right? <laughs> Open that door and he'll come in. Right? And he'll dine with us. What do you say? Amen. Confidence. Man, confidence is something. Because when a person is broken, you don't have confidence. You know that. You know, some persons, once you get on their bad side once, that's it. No more confidence in you at all. Right? Sometimes when we ask God for something and persons say, yes, some persons say, oh, you need to go on a three-day fasting and God will grant it. You ever heard that before? Oh, yeah. You go on your three-day fasting and you, didn't, you don't get it. Ah, uh, you didn't believe. That's what they said. Your faith wasn't strong enough. Right? Okay, you go on a week fasting, but you still don't get it. Oh, God says three things. Yes, no, and wait. So you're back to square one, right? <laughs> Nobody wants. But God is saying, listen, and this actual words were from um, David. David said, though an army surround me, right, my heart shall not fear. The war rages against me. In this I will be confident. He also said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will for okay, so we understand what confidence is, and for people nowadays living in well in America, we need confidence in God, right? What does that mean in the world now? We need confidence in God, and what is to come, as we're told, that that time of trouble, we're going to need confidence in God. Okay. The fourth one is knowledge. An intelligent heart will always what? Acquires knowledge. And the heir of the wise seeks knowledge. No, the Bible says, and we have heard it, that my people perish because of the lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. Not, not for demons. <laughs> not for lack of money. Huh? But for a lack of knowledge. lack of knowledge. So knowledge is very important as it comes on to faith. A lot of persons think that faith is just believing in something. But faith takes on knowledge. Now this is the one that we know. Number five. Number five says, now faith comes by hearing. And hearing the word, of God. word of God. Now I put listening there because I know that, I mean, you, we know that there's a difference between hearing and listening. Right? If you hear something enough, I mean, nowadays you can call, I don't want to get into it though, but you can call somebody something and they still don't believe. Or if you call them long enough, they'll believe. You know that, right? So in other words, then, you have some people who say, okay, I am a male. But when you look, they don't look like males. And they want you to call them something else. So I think, as it relates to sight, and I don't know, but that's for another time. So God is saying, faith has to do with hearing his word. Not only hearing, because we're hearing a lot of things, right? But hearing by the word of God. So the more we hear the word of God, it builds our faith. And that is what we want, right? So God, when, when the devil comes came to Jesus, he said, it is written. Right? It is written. Three times, it is written. And it's so wonderful that the Bible says that Jesus is the living word. Huh? Oh, yeah. Now, let's move. What are the three main parts of faith? Because we're breaking it down. What are the three main part of faith? You can read them. Faith deals with, the first one is the affective. This deals with the appropriate emotional response. You know, funny enough, we have heard this story many times, but 
Um, so there's a guy who was trying to, you know, he was on a rope and he was trying to bring, you know, somebody on the rope, like on a real bar. He said, can you, do you believe that I can, you know, <laughs> on a rope and push you across on this rope in a real bar? person said, yes. He said, okay, first volunteer. Nobody wants to volunteer. So you didn't believe, right? When Peter saw the figure on the water and he said, Jesus, is that you? If it is you, let me come on the water, right? I'm not going out there now because first they thought, thought it was a ghost, right? So we talk about faith, the emotional response to faith. Not many, not many times we believe in certain things. You know, Jesus said to, to Mary and Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Do you believe? Our emotional response is important. But there are certain things about our emotional response that we have to look into. And there are three things we're going to um, break it down in. Interest, attitude, and value. How does that um, affect our emotional response to fate? First one, interest. What is it that is in your life that you're interested in? What, you know, have you curious? What intrigues you? For the woman, for Eve, what, in, what intrigued Eve? Okay. So the fruit, right? The fruit and, and the serpent talking, huh? Didn't God say? Interest. But the Bible says that we should not store treasures huh, on earth. Don't store treasures. Didn't say you must not save now. That's just two different things, right? <laughs> it says you must not store treasures on earth. Why? Because thieves and moth and all those things, it will decay. But store treasures in heaven, right? Because that is forever. Money. Oh, my. That's the topic, right? In God we trust or in money we trust? I mean, Solomon says money solves all problems. That's what he says. So money is very important. But there's, the, there's a root. The love of it. There's a root to all evil. Right? And it's the love of money. So if you want to find the root to all evil, you love money and you'll find that. A lot of persons right now, they're interested in money. Don't they? Well, everybody's interested in money because you can't live without money. But we as God's people, we should not love money. Love, loving money means... That you will do anything for it. And you will sell out your brothers and, and, and sisters for money. You don't do that. Right? So we're talking about the interest now, you know, of faith. Right? Now, another interest is the desires of the flesh. Huh? A lot of persons don't want to talk about this part of it because it's, it's, it, 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 it's coming home, you know. It's hit hard. A lot of persons struggle with it. But we know that there are three main, as Paul said. Loss of the eyes. Lust of the flesh and the pride of life. Right? So we know that. Can you or any one of us take fire in our bosom and not get burned? It's not possible. So then, we need to understand then that our bosom is the seat of our thoughts and reflections. We have to protect that. Very important. Attitude. Jesus says in Matthew 5 that blessed is that person, right? The poor in spirit. A lot of persons just say blessed are the poor. Think that, you know, the less money you have, the closer you are to God. I don't know where that comes from. But it says the poor in spirit, which means the humble. That's what it means, right? For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those that mourn, for they shall be comforted. And it goes on, right? Now, our attitude should be to rejoice, because further down in the text, it says, be happy when you're persecuted for righteousness' sake, for great is your reward in heaven. It's funny, though. 
Because maybe one, I must be one of those who have the greatest reward too. Do you feel like you're persecuted? I mean, we must be rich. Rejoice, the Bible says, in the Lord always. Let your request be known to God. Do we have any prayers in the house? You pray a whole lot? Morning, noon, and night, you pray to God? And sometimes you pray, sometimes you wonder if God is doing this. Yeah, I'm tired of you. Me and you again? Uh -huh. Oh, man. But the Bible says that we must make our requests known to God, right? What do you say, amen? Our values. Man, I don't know if it's just television, but when you watch some movies, yeah, every time they have some issue, they drink. I'm wondering, man, <laughs> wine, huh? Wine, everything. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm stressed out. I need about a glass of wine. The Bible says that wine is a mocker and strong drink is raging. What does that mean? Hmm, mocker. Have you ever seen somebody drunk? See how they, they behave and how they act? It brings out different emotions for different people, right? But the Bible says, be not, be deceived by it. Because if you do, you are not wise, right? So we should not do that. Don't get, don't, don't be tricked by alcohol, not even a little taste of it because some persons say, just taste a little nah. by beholding, the scripture says we become changed the more we have something in front of us, the more we're going to become like that, right? We can't stay and, 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 and be in front of watching things that we're not supposed to watch on the TV and then expect us to, to be and see life in a particular way huh? And beholding is not only seeing, you know Beholding has to do with hearing too. When somebody says, oh, you'll never make it. Oh, it's too late for you, you're too old. Oh, your complexion is not light enough. Oh, you're from that neighborhood, so you, you, know, you will always be like that. Loser. Ah, right? But God is saying, no. Nah. Don't let that, those things get in your head, right? You are fearfully and wonderfully mean. What do you say? Amen. Now, we go on to the second part now of um, faith. Faith is the evidence of things unseen. Evidence is the availability of facts, right? Got it. It has to be valid too. I mean, you go before the judge and say that this is evident 101, evidence 101, you better know that, listen. And they would say, oh, that evidence was tampered with. Has to come from a credible source too. <laughs> right? Because right? they said that's non-admissible. Right? I watched some movies, so I know. <laughs> right? So evidence is showing facts, right? But how can facts be unseen? This sounds like an oxymoron. Example of an oxymoron. His faith unfaithfully kept him falsely true. Hmm. God says, Why say Lord Lord? Matthew 7. Why say, why call me Lord Lord and do not do what I say? It's not an oxymoron. He says, if you love me. Keep my commandments. How can you say that you love me and you don't keep my commandments? You're a liar. How can you say that you love me who you don't see, but your brother who you do see, you don't love? You're a liar. Right? So God is saying, listen, move away from that. It's the evidence of things not seen. So since faith is the substance of things, then it matters what state it is in, right? The Laodicean church. God says, number one, I know your works. Don't you think God knows everything about us? Yeah. He does. You can't hide from God. He knows your thoughts. The Bible says, God understands our thoughts from afar off, right? So he knows. He said that I know that you are neither hot 
not cold. You're lukewarm. He knows. So we can't hide from God. So we are going to look at faith in different forms of matter. Four forms. And then after I do that, then we wrap up. Right? Everybody still with me? I'm not boring anybody now. Are you following? All right, great. So the first one is solid, right? Solid. Let's look at it. Solid is something that is firm and has a, a fixed or stable shape, right? Solid as, as a rock, they say, right? Now, our song, on Christ, the solid rock I stand, all, not some, or most, all other ground is sinking sand. Do we believe that? Of course we do. We have to believe it. We have to believe it. Peter's expression of faith. When everybody else was asking, because Jesus, you know, Jesus, I love how he looks at things. It's not so much about what people think. It's what I think. Who do you say that I am, Jesus said. Peter's expression was, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. That's an expression of faith. Amen. And he said that flesh and blood, can you imagine that? So it is telling me then that when you have that expression of faith, it doesn't come from mankind. Amen. It's from the Holy Spirit, Amen. right? And he said, listen, Peter, upon this expression that you have made, I will build my man and the gates of hell will... Can you imagine, can you imagine how glued the enemy was to hear that? Can you imagine? Because every word that came out of Jesus' mouth, man shall not live by, but by every so, so don't believe. See, we don't listen to every word. The devil listens to every word that comes out of Jesus' mouth. Do you understand? But it is very important for us to do the same. Gates of hell will never prevail. So in other words, and so when we make a declaration of our faith, the gates of hell cannot. Amen. We are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. That's what the Bible says. So when we, when we declare that I am above and not beneath, when we declare that we are ambassadors of Christ, when we declare that we are his righteousness, when we declare that we are Christ's followers, and then all hell breaks loose, because I can tell you this, once you associate yourself with God, man, have you ever prayed and you fall asleep? Reading the Bible and you fall asleep? You think the enemy is going to leave you alone when you declare Jesus? Hey, is that same Peter, you know? You see, as, as he said that, what happened? What, what, what happened? <laughs> oh, man. And, and further down, Jesus said, listen, I see that Satan is trying to save you like, like wheat. So when we make expression of faith, don't believe that the devil is going to like say, oh, so you think you're somebody. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's coming after you. So don't, 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 Paul, Peter said, don't, don't think it's something strange when fire trials come. Yeah. Right? Amen. It's important. Good. Now, the next one is liquid. Now, liquid is something that freely flows, right? It, 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 it has a constant volume, right? Now, the Lord says that he will guide us continually in drought. He will satisfy our soul and strengthen our bones, right? And we shall be like a spring of water that will never fail. Hmm, water. If you notice... The woman at the well, because we, we, we touched on that this morning, right? The woman at the well. She said, listen, man, this water that I have, Jesus says, when you drink this water, you'll never be thirst again. Is faith the same way? Do you believe that faith is the same way? 
When you believe in something, Jesus said, I will be with you all way, even unto the end. That's what he said. Do we believe it? If we believe it, then we have to claim it. Right? And the last one now is gas. Man, gas means something different in Jamaica. Huh? <laughs> but um, this doesn't have a fixed shape. Right? This is formed to eat heat. Hmm. Our faith must stand trial. Don't it? I remember a couple of years ago when I, when I was talking to this lady about Job. And she said, listen, so we're guinea pigs to God. Huh? <laughs> I mean, what? We're like lab rats. God wants to test us. Huh? Like how oh, he did Job. I said, I mean, that's, a, that's not the right way to look at it. I mean... If God is going to say to, to Job, this man, listen, um, have you considered my servant? I mean, God is boasting over, he's putting his reputation, you know, on somebody who he, who he knows and believes will stand up for him. Amen. Right? Is God doing the same thing for us? Do you think that God ever calls our names and say, hey, consider, you know, consider Aurel, huh? Do you think that God <laughs> does those things? I think he does. Right. So God wants us, because if we're the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hid, it means then that God is saying, listen, I have my people over here, Amen. right, in Marsville. And, and, and Satan, you can't do nothing about it. Amen. Right? So, our faith will be tested because it said that when, just like gold, when gold is tried in fire, Right? It will come out in a pure form. Right? I don't like that part of it though, you know. I mean, nobody wants to go through any fire. I mean, I prefer to be like those three evil boys. <laughs> you know, but that's not the case, right? <laughs> that's not the case, right? I, I mean, but it says that we must prepare ourselves. And God said, when we pass through the fire, you'll be there. When you, when you pass through the flood, you'll be there. So that should be comforted enough to know that when we go through it, we'll not be destroyed. Amen? Okay. We're winding down now. The last one is plasma. Yeah. Plasma. Yeah, I mean, you know that education, they, 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 you know, not only solid liquid and gas, but another form of matter is also plasma now. Additional one they put to it. Now, this, is, this one is interesting because plasma is the largest part of the blood that carries what? Water, what else? Salt and nutrient throughout the body for it to function properly. The Bible says that the life of the flesh is where? Is in the blood. So then, is the life of the soul is true faith. An expression of faith. Amen. Don't it? Amen. Of course. So Jesus said, your faith will, your faith will make you whole. Yes. This is important for you to know that. And see what he says. He said, where are the other nine? Because these are scriptures. Where are the other nine? Huh? Where? One return to give him thanks. Could this be a part of faith? Because sometimes we just want to get healed but we don't want to be made whole. Amen. When we give God thanks for what he does, then we'll be made whole. In conclusion, faith is having complete trust and confidence in someone or something. Faith is like we have she, as sheep has gone astray, right? Don't it? <sighs> While some persons think that it's committing the act, being, being active in it, you sin, God said if you even think about it, <laughs> you have already committed the act, right? 
So, so, so we, want, we need to understand how faith is. It, 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 it's about the mind. Right? It's about the mind. So if we are faithless, the Bible says, if we are faithless, he is faithful because God remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. You know what that is saying? It is saying that God associates with us so much that even with, in our unfaithfulness, he remains faithful to us. Amen. Any relationship that you're in and you're not faithful in it, it won't work, right? But Jesus loves us so much that even when we are unfaithful, he's faithful to us. And not many gods will do that. Not many gods will do that. I mean, as it said earlier on, he's the only God. What's his name, Jit? That's his name, right? Jesus is the only God that came down to us. Everybody else, you have to go up to them. You have to give them some form of thing, right? To show your worthiness. And Bible says that um, when we were sinners, Christ, Christ died for us, right? God continues to identify himself with sinners that believes. God still remembers that we are made in his image and likeness. God put his reputation on us as human beings. We are, we, are, we, we are like the worst and the best thing that God has ever done. <laughs> Just God showed us how to live and we show him how to die. He, he, he left the splendor of heaven, the best place you can be, to come here. And they, 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 they beat him, crucified him. He came unto his own, and they, did not, they, they rejected him. And he saw all of that. The Bible says he despised the shame, bear the cross, and went all the way for us. He was willing to give up everything for us. But we gave him nothing. No, that is awesome. What did you say? Amen. Faith is so important that they have some Hall of Famers. Right? One entire chapter of the Bible. <laughs> Hebrews 11 talks about the people of faith. And you know what I love about this chapter? Everybody is in it. Everybody, you know, God is no respecter of person. Everybody is in it. You name it. So by faith, right, Abel offered a, a more what? Excellent sacrifice. By faith, Abraham offered his, his son, Sarah, have a child in old age. Man, this one is a hard one to swallow, right? <laughs> but I saw on the news, though, I think the person is from Africa, 70-year-old woman had a baby. I don't know what true it is, though, but yeah, <laughs> I guess this is still happening. By faith, Rahab, the prostitute. Now, a lot of person probably would not buy this one, <laughs> you know. She did not perish because she believed. Yes, yeah, she hid the spies. A person don't understand. So, so, so faith, if you notice, that faith has a lot to do with not only believing, but working and believing in God. Because th these different, the, all of these people experience faith in a different way. So we will not always have faith in different ways. What you might have um, confidence in or faith in, um, I probably won't. I mean, you know, I'm afraid of spiders. You probably will be, you're not afraid of spiders. You know, you might, you know, want to cuddle a snake. No, I'm not going near a snake. <laughs> right? So that's different. But the point that I'm making is this. God says that faith matters. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. For anybody that comes to God, what's the first thing that person should do? must first believe. Amen. must first believe that he's a rewarder yes. of him who diligently, diligently now, diligently speak, um, seek him. Amen. Many times we believe first, but the diligence is gone. Yes. 
Because guess what? Once you knock one, two, or three times and there's no response, we're out of here, right? We don't want, we don't want that, right? But God is saying that we should be diligent. The last thing that God says, and what everybody wants to hear, what I want to hear is, well done, though good and faithful servant. Well done. That's what I want to hear. Anybody have any witness? Yes, I want to hear that. Well done. Because my faith has really made me whole. So as I conclude, I realize that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things unseen. Believe in yourself, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. Believe that God is who he say he is. Amen. And no matter what may it hap might happen, no matter what happened in this world, we have to trust God. And everybody has to realize and know God for himself or herself. Your faith can't save me. And my faith can't save you. But we're all in this together. Because as I said, faith has unified properties to it. And let us know that we walk by by what? Faith. And the just shall live by? Faith. By faith. And I say, Amen.